Welcome to William Steele, True Crime and Steele Spotlight Television. And here I come again with Ignacio Esteban, retired ATF agent, extraordinaire, author of 76 books, 1976, Freedom. Yes, Ignacio, there we go. I like that. <laughs> I like that number. I, I think about it, 1776. That's, uh, that's a great year for this country. No doubt about that. Got, the start of something great. I got great. a feeling I'll <laughs> still be dealing with you when you have 1777. <laughs> I hope so. That, that, that would be an amazing we're, number. We're going to be rolling into a political show. A lot's been unfolding. This is going to be a very fast show. Getting to the highlights. My uh, my view as somebody who's uh, going to be most likely, and I announced, running for president in 2028. 28. And Ignacio, wow. who we thinking, hold thinking about time. Congress. What I'm thinking about, but I, I'm so disgusted what I'm seeing right now, especially as a Republican. It, it is hard for me to really want to run when I am seeing such a divide and chaos in this party. Uh, what happened is, is an historical moment, folks. If you haven't seen it, go look at it. This has never happened in this country's history, history of almost uh, over 250 years. The Speaker of the House has been vacated by his own party. He's been vacated by his own party. That, that has never, ever happened. But it's such an odd situation what happened. They vacated him using the Democrats to do so because the Republicans, Bill, don't know, have such a slim majority. It was only about five or six that they had a, a group which were disgruntled with him, the angry eight, as people call them, and they ended up using the Democrats – to embarrass the Republicans to have McCarthy vacated. It, it is an unbelievable situation that's happening. It's never happened. And now the Republicans are fighting. Who are they going to put now in the speaker position? Right. Now they have to have this huge drawn battle. There's a lot of people throwing the hats in the in the ring right now. Uh, I don't know how long this is going to last, but I don't I don't think Matt Gates, who is the ringleader of this out of Pensacola, did the Republicans any justice. And now when you had about <laughs> 200 and some Republicans who were happy with, with uh, McCarthy and only eight were unhappy. Even Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren uh, Boeber even voted to keep McCarthy. These were right. completely different characters with Matt Gates. So uh, it, it, it doesn't McCarthy sit well with the took, Wasn't McCarthy the one that took like eight votes to get him even in? He, he, he had to make a deal with the devil to get to get his speakership. And, and, and pretty much a deal with the devil with Matt Gates at the end who, because it was so tight, said, you'll get my vote only if we could vacate you with one vote from me to motion. And that's what he ended up doing because he was so upset with the uh, situation with the uh, debt ceiling, and he was so upset with also not shutting down the government because they wanted more cuts, and et cetera. But you know what? And everything else in, in, in Congress, you have to sometimes cut deals. And if you're upset with him, this wasn't the way to do it because I think it hurts. It shows Republicans being weak. It strengthened the Democrats, and I think it'll be hard for Republicans to hold the House now next year. It, it really embarrassed them. I, I think they're going to try to find a way to primary him or bring someone else because now he, he has over 200-some members. He is loathed, Bill. He is absolutely loathed in the Republican Party. He is now the Benedict Arnold. Uh, and this is Newt Gingrich, who's Speaker of the House. He called him the, the biggest traitor in Republican history. Oh. Newt Gingrich called him the biggest traitor in Republican history. So – this guy did us no favors. If you're a Republican, he does no favor. I, I think he did it for his own personal gain. I think he ends up in Fox or CNN getting two or three. He only makes, people don't know, he makes uh, like less than 200000 a year, right? Wow. But if he gets as an analyst with Fox or CNN, he's going to make three or $4 million a year. So right. this may have been a ploy at the end to become an analyst. And some of these congressmen and senators do that. They, they, they become a, a big person, big, big personality, so oh, they can yeah. get a big contract. So I, I think at the end, this was for his own, my opinion, his own personal benefit. Now, well, because if you really cared about your country and your party, you work within the system because this is done is really empower the Democrats, which only hurts because the country sees this as a weak, divided country or at least a divided party who can't get their act together. And why should we vote for them again? Right. So right. Yeah. that's uh, so we had some other people have had to vacate in a hurry. <laughs> what happened with Pelosi and uh, I think. Uh, uh, so Diane Feinstein got a divine order to vacate. She got vacated also. Yeah, you you had uh, Nancy Pelosi. So the first act, so you have now an acting uh, Speaker of the House, right? Just until they get one that's elected from the body. And the first action he did was to remove, because Pelosi still had her old office there. And it was an, an enormous office, but she's not Speaker anymore. 
she is now a, uh, a regular congressperson, a congresswoman, right? So she gets a lot smaller office. So she got vacated because McCarthy now is going to take her office. <laughs> okay. So All she's right. going to go in a tiny little office. And yeah, and she wasn't there because she was at Feinstein's uh, funeral out there in San Francisco, who was a former mayor and represented and everything else in her long history as an ultra liberal, you know, first, uh, I think, was she the first female senator? For, definitely the first female senator from California. Could have been the first female senator, period, in the country back back in the 90s. But she she had her a lot, her policies, of course, a lot of people didn't agree with. But even at the end of her life, she she was um, pretty much a, a vegetable, right? And she shouldn't have been in her situation. Her cognitive skills had completely, really disappeared. She couldn't remember meetings. She couldn't remember phone calls. She couldn't remember anything she had been doing for years now because of her health issues. And that shows my argument, which I put there on my true crime uh, YouTube channel. You know, it's a political channel that they're out there, Bill. We'll put a link to it. They can look at it and put a lot more content in there. And I talked about when it happened. We need term limits. We need term limits because if the president has eight years, why are we giving these people 30, 40, 50, 60 years in the 80s and 90s where a lot of them really are just puppets? And, and pretty much the staff are the one controlling them. Or others are. And, and it's really not fair to constituents. So uh, and a lot of these people can't. Even have, yeah. Once they're there, they don't want to get out. Even Pelosi's in decline. I've seen some really weird gas oh she's made, and some of her images you see she's so gaunt now. And I and I, and I guess maybe so much plastic surgery. You know, I don't know if she's 112 or 82, but she's up there, right? Up there. And I've seen images like when Michael Jackson was like really thin and on his way out, and yeah. you know was torn up by these painkillers, whatever he was doing to himself. Their faces, mm -hmm. I've seen them side by side. Pelosi looks like. Michael Jackson in the months before his death. I mean, yeah, she looks awful. She looks awful. And, and oh she's another God. one that has a lot of gaps, just like Biden does. But Biden's yeah. health is another one there. Um, I, I just, well, now well, I mean, we're going to transition to. We feel horrible when old, older people go into decline. You know, we're going to be doing a show about the uh, the yeah. horrors of these assisted living facilities and the senior citizens, what they endure. And so we're very, we're very, uh, Mary and I are very staunch advocates in that arena. So we're not making light of the decline of the president or these individuals because we are actually working within that arena to help people that are suffering like that. Right. The point is, I think I, they, I, have I, I think country, I, they have the country and these votes, these powerful votes under their control, and they're that's, being maneuvered by people that are not that are not elected. They're being maneuvered, and they're just being they're placeholders is all they are because they've they're they've lost their mental faculties. And, you know, I blame that also on Chuck Schumer, who is Senate Majority Leader, and. Uh, mm -hmm. He should have been more forceful to have her resign. She should have been out of there years ago. And that, that's a lack of leadership that, that came out of the Senate. I have to say it also. Listen, I'm, I'm a fair guy. I'm a straight shooter. I, I'm about accountability. Mitch McConnell doesn't look good either. Let's, let's be clear. The same minority leader, Republican, uh, Kentucky, he's had a lot of – he's had, he had suffered a, ma a massive stroke, right? That's people who don't know. And, and, that, and now he's frozen a lot and, and he, in press conference. You, see, you look at the videos. Sometimes he just looks like, like this. He, he can't answer. He just goes away. And, and I heard horrible. that the staff, the staff doesn't even panic about it, and that's one of the signs, perhaps, of onset Parkinson's. People freeze up, and then they start shaking, and you know it's progressive. And the reason they don't panic when it happens is because he's not announced that perhaps he has Parkinson's. Yeah. I, I think that's another example where he shouldn't run again. You got two years left. Just finish off the term if you can. If you can't, then you're going to have to resign. But this is when it, it gets to a point where you need term because then it's like maybe you get another six years or maybe I can win another. No, you, you've had a long time. You had a long run. Let younger generation go in there and, and go on there because if not, this is the situation we have with the Pelosi's, with the Biden's, with the Feinstein's. And and, and, and we had one um, in the – what was it? Out of South Carolina, uh, Thurman, he, he was 100 years old, Bill. You, you can't have that. A hundred, a hundred year old in, in the Senate. Uh, he, he, it was back in the nineties. Uh, I think he died in the two thousands. I have to look at the exact date. What was um, his first name? I forget. That name sounds so sir, familiar. Yeah. He, he was there. I, I'll look it up for you, but, um, storm he, Thurman or something like that. Storm. Yeah. Yeah. What 100 years old from South Carolina. That that's yeah. unbelievable. That's unacceptable. <laughs> you, you, you can't function in your, in your late nineties. A lot of them I can't, I mean, they, they can't do much. And, and again, he was just there as a body, and, and other people were running. Well, he, he will he vote. He, do you really understand what you're doing? What you're voting for? I doubt it. They're just telling you what to do. 
now the por- more important race is these people are in their in their youth and some of them appear to be brain dead and we're talking about you know respectfully gavin newsom what is going on yeah. with this clown in his state of california the state's yeah. falling apart the monster yes, these democratic policies fail miserably each and every time they try them they are now becoming victims crime victims of their own policies by getting carjacked and robbed and murdered yes. and you know unfortunately because they're now i was incarcerated and I think nonviolent like me or drug problem, you know, maybe that's the highest thing to say should be given, tr- you know, treatment or lesser sentences or maybe a little more scrutiny uh, at after the incarceration to make sure you don't relapse and all that. But these massive sentences that rightfully so in many cases were given out for violent crimes no longer right, exist right. anymore because of these yeah. Democratic policies. Why would you vote for Democrat? And they're literally demonstrably destroying the country. Yeah, so and on top of that, they don't, they don't want you armed either. They don't want to protect you. They don't want to incarcerate, and they don't want you protecting yourself. What the heck? It's like it's like pictures from uh, we'll talk about New York City. What what a disaster has become in the subway? You can't be protected. The, the criminals are armed, right? Everybody knows it, and they want to victimize you. I couldn't imagine. I live in. I've always lived in red states. I visited blue states, but uh, in Virginia has now become very red state, which I'm at now. And Florida, I, I couldn't imagine living where I cannot protect myself. I, I, and knowing there's there's criminal, I, I've seen a lot of the videos, and I, I'm I'm looking at the pictures from you know certain parts of Los Angeles and then parts of New York City, and and I'm looking at it and I said, how do people live like that when they're in fear to go outside? I, I just don't understand how people live like that. I, I just can't imagine living in that kind of environment in America where you should be able to protect your family. And so what he did, new gun. If you want to buy a new gun from a federal firearms licensee, he signed a law that was passed with the Democrats. To make it a twelve percent sales tax, twelve percent—that's high. Wow. On top of the federal, you got to pay, right? And on top of that, your concealed weapons permit is pretty much useless because now you can't even go in public locations carrying a firearm. You've been trained, you paid for it. I mean, here in Virginia, I'm, I'm access to go where right now. I'm also retired law enforcement. Florida, uh, I think now I've double checked. You may not even need one now. So that's that's the way it should be. Your constitutional rights. They say your constitutional rights. That why, why do you have to jump through all these hoops? But well, you know what? We jump through the hoops. You make more revenue. Okay, concealed weapons permit. Okay, here's another revenue for the state. Your tax. It's pretty much another tax. You're getting more money from us. Whatever you need it, but you know, let us carry, protect ourselves for a family because nothing's worse where you wish you had your weapon and you see something horrible happen to your family because you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, fend off these monsters who are coming at you. That's what. So yeah. California has become the great escape. I, I don't know anybody in the right mind that wants to stay in California. Was over taxation, over regulation, and you know who he just appointed now to the Senate, right, to take over for Feinstein, a very ultra liberal. No, no but, I, but I know I, I don't know who he actually appointed, but I know last week there was serious discussion of putting a uh, <laughs> Meghan yeah. Markle, f- f- Prince Harry's uh, wife, you know, as uh, in that position, and, and you know, as you know, Samantha's a friend of ours, and she's my yeah. occasional co-host, Samantha Markle, and we're talking to relatives to the royal family in England. And so there was serious talk of putting this incompetent, allegedly incompetent woman, Megan, who has nothing but drama and a litany of lies to, to, to define her life, even her public life, you know, into politics. And I keep saying, and it may be coming soon, I think at this stage, the only thing Harry and Megan are suited for would be a, a reality TV show. That's where they'll hit it out of the park. Because but did Netflix sign them a $100 million deal? deal? I think I'm doing a That's documentary. That's where I made my name. I mean, I have millions of fans now yeah. with reality TV. Yeah. I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, didn't they sign a $100 million deal with Netflix? Uh, they're going to have some sort of project coming out. So, yeah, that's that's where they're at. They, that's what they're doing. That's where they're making their money. Uh, they make more money than being Royals, that's for sure. I think the Royals were making, what, three, four, five million a year. Now they're making hundreds of millions. So it, it, it wasn't worth them being Royals. They, they weren't making it. But no, it, it, she wasn't picked. It, real, it was, I want to uh, give a shout out quickly to, I want to give a shout out quickly to Samantha. I should be down there to see her in another few days, hopefully, and a couple of other people oh, okay. live in South Florida, Boca. But um, so shout out to Samantha. Samantha, we love you. We support you and your attorney, Peter Tickton, um, but also your your dad um, and your brother. Your brother's hysterical. I saw some of his stuff on YouTube. Your I brother too. is That's pretty funny, yeah. a hysterical guy. So God That's bless you. That's pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Yeah, that's funny. Funny stuff. Some of the videos, <laughs> but uh, yeah, she didn't. She didn't get it. It, it, it was another one, and uh, she's in there. Um, and her, again, liberal policies. They're putting people in there. That's what California. That's all he's doing. And uh, he himself now he's going to debate Ron DeSantis in November. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be a big thing, one on one. 
Sean Hannity is going to be the moderator. No audience. It's going to be televised on Fox, I think, live. So watch uh, out for that, folks. I don't know. I don't remember the exact date, top of my head, but look it up, and it's going to be an interesting debate. DeSantis has done a little better in the polls, but Trump's a runaway. Every time they indict him, he pretty much does better in the points. He, he's a runaway. But, you know, we're going, going to the presidential election here. I'm going to go right here with the X factor that might have just changed everything. That's going to be RFK Jr., Bobby Kennedy's son. It's going to change everything. Running now. Before, before you move on, let me just say something yeah. about Trump. I think I mentioned that Peter Tickton, a good friend of mine, is representing Samantha Markle in her lawsuit against her sister, Meghan Markle. Peter also represents Donald Trump and has been a lifelong friend of his. He's one of the attorneys. Yes, and he wrote a book about him, What Makes Trump Tick. So shout out to Peter Interesting. and Donald Interesting. Trump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and if you haven't seen the video, have you seen have you seen that rap video that came out of him when he bonded out or he, he got bailed? From when, when his first arrest, I think, no, in, in I August. Like send it to me. I want to see it. <laughs> you haven't seen the, the rap video? AI, no. artificial intelligence, used his voice amazingly to do this rap video. If you haven't seen it, folks, check it out. I'll, I'll put you, I'll send you a link so you can look at it, Bill. If you haven't seen it, okay. uh, I'm, I'll forward to you uh, now or, or later. We can post it. And uh, it's pretty good stuff here. Uh, I'll do it before. AI in can between mimic shows. the human voice so well. Now, I know you've been out mm -hmm. of law enforcement about a year. But what happens if they encounter that on a wiretap and it's somebody putting AI over the line, knowing you guys are listening in? Do you guys have a way? Are there tags within that to know that it's generated and and know? This yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, this this is this is something new and, and it's all new things. A brave new world we live in, right? So, there should, there like I said, be, there should be a, a like a non discernible uh, tone or something going through AI generated that we couldn't pick up, yeah. but your equipment could as an investigator. Maybe they could. Say, right. no, exactly. No, no. His wife you, you, generated you, you, this. He, he's not moving guns. This, he's being set up, you know? Yeah. Because that, you that wouldn't want to be put the, it, person in prison. You, 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 know, you know, with all the deep fakes and AI going on, that is something to be concerned about. With deep mm -hmm. fakes and AI, it's going to be harder and harder to tell. Did he really do it? That looks so real. Maybe it wasn't. But, but in your be case, careful. as a, a federal investigator who just came out of federal law enforcement, would you, knowing what exists now, would you be a lot more skeptical of certain recordings, knowing that your guy you're investigating is so cautious, but all of a sudden here's this detailed conversation, dates, times, places, over his home phone, doing all this illegal stuff. There's no way he became that careless overnight. Somebody deep faked our guy. This can't be so him. The, the, it could be happening. I mean, any, any, anything's possible. I, I agree. Any, anything's possible. When you have, you know, with criminals, there's a lot of infighting. And someone could try to set them up. Uh, obviously, there, there's always infighting going on. So those are things you always got to think about. Always, exactly. But, even competitive. But it, it would it would make for an interesting project. That's for sure, Bill. For an interesting uh, drama series. Let's move, let's move into RFK though. We do a show about that. Yeah. Our RFK Jr. is the X factor that has changed everything now between Trump and Biden because now he's fed up with the DNC. He's now going to go as an independent. He's making it officially October 9th in Philadelphia. And uh, he is taking a lot of votes from Biden and a lot of votes from Trump. He is a devoted Catholic. Uh, he is pro-life, which is which is important. He, he would sign, he said, the federal ban on abortion after 15 weeks, which I think is what everyone wants, consistency in this country. We don't want you hopping around different states where he said, I can get an abortion now at, in the third trimester while I can do something. We want a consistency throughout the country, and I think a 15-week ban after 15 weeks, it's, I think, consistent. It gives people enough time, and it protects the life of unborn child because it is clearly murder in the, in the third trimester, and even before. I mean, for me, well, I'm pro-life. Well, let, let, let me back up and state my position. I believe it, it's murder anytime, and morally, anytime. it shouldn't be done. It's a horrible, difficult decision for people to make, but I do recognize that women have a legal right in many places to make that decision, and I would right. not interfere with their right to do that, but morally, I don't agree with it. I, I want to put up on the screen here a second. You wrote a book, an interesting book about RFK. Let me throw this up on the screen and, and, and let my audience know here that the link for this book and uh, Ignacio's other books and my books as well will be in the description if you're interested in checking them out. A lot of his books are free. Uh, tell us uh, about that book right there, Ignacio, and, and what you know about yeah, RFK. I, I, wrote that, I wrote that months ago, months ago when he decided to run, and I, I saw all the traction he was gaining a lot, mm -hmm. but then – Things turned for him when the Democratic Party started pretty much calling him a, a, a crackpot, in essence. They, they, they're they pretty much he, – he's not anti-vaccine. He's not an anti-vaxxer at all. He's fully compliant with all the vaccines for himself, for his family, right? He he just did – he, he just had hesitations with the COVID vaccine. 
like most people did. It was a new vaccine, and he had you know reservations about it, and and he he didn't did, do that one. But he's not anti-vaccine. He's not an anti-vaxxer, right. and he may have some ideas about the assassination of his uncle, which a lot of people do. Which, you know, Jack Kennedy, mm -hmm. and a lot of people have it about his father. Uh, me personally, I was fascinated that he went to see Sirhan Sirhan, the man who murdered his father, in wow. in prison out of San Diego in 2018. I don't know if I would have done that, uh, but he talked to him and he, he wanted to see firsthand if there was anybody else involved. He thinks there could have been someone else. A lot of people don't. I mean, his, his, he's Palestinian. A lot of people don't know what was his motivation. His father, Bobby Kennedy, was very pro-Israel, right? And he's Palestinian. And he did not like his, uh, Bobby Kennedy's policies with that. Horrible situation. I mean, he, he got him in the kitchen in the, the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles. Uh, allegedly, what I was reading and seeing the video, Secret Service uh, told him to go one way. He went the other way. He got caught in the kitchen, and he, the guy happened to be there, and he, he made the most of the situation he did and, and, and shot him a few times and you know, a few times in the head. By that, that scenario, ended. was not pre-planned, or was he trying to look for a chance? Was it there arm looking for a chance? Or I think look for a chance. Yeah, he was looking for a chance, I think, and he got that chance, right? You know, Hinkley I got his that's chance. That's actually on camera. That assassination is on camera because – yeah. Um, they, they show him there in the white shirt on the floor. I'm not sure yeah. if uh, RFK, his son, was standing there at the time. But no, he yeah, wasn't. That was horrible. That was, horrible. He, he, that was, that was, that was a, a dishwashing worker. I, I saw his interview, and uh, he held his head. And uh, the, the, and allegedly, right. RFK's, RFK's words, last words were, uh, you know, is everybody okay? Concerned about everybody else's health. Was anybody else shot? Is everybody else okay? And when they were trying to lift him up, it says, uh, his last words were, you know, don't lift me up. Don't lift me up. And that was it because, and, and then he, he, he passed away. So it's uh, tragic because, you know, he, he had ideas and everything else, but there's civilized ways to do things. We don't agree with somebody and that's not the way to do things. And a lot of people think that was the first cause, I guess, with Palestinians to, uh, you know, to fight for their, I guess they're trying to fight for their freedom, but that's not the way to do it. Obviously that's not right. the assassination of a, uh, of a leader that way. He was a Senator, by the way, he was a Senator of New York. He very controversial in that story too, but going back with him with Junior, he's he's also a recovering heroin addict. A lot of people don't know that he had a severe heroin addiction. He suffered a lot after his father's death. He, he alcoholism. He was expelled from many schools. It took him years to recover from all that. Eventually, he finished from law school. Eventually, he became a very prominent environmental attorney, and he won some major major cases. So he's very pro environment. Uh, again, he's pro life, which I like, and I and I support that. Uh, he doesn't like endless wars, right? I don't think he wants to put an end to this Ukrainian war. He hopefully we don't spend another trillion dollars like we did in Afghanistan here in Ukraine. He wants to get some sort of peace treaty. That's one thing he would try to do, negotiate a peace deal with uh, Zelensky and Putin over this conflict. You know, obviously you got the territories out there and work on those deals. So a lot of things I like about him that I see, he also worked, he challenged Fauci a lot with the, with the, with the Trump administration. I, I see him more of a moderate, leaning, uh, leaning right, I think he's seen the failures. He said Democratic Party today is not, this is his words, not the Democratic Party of his family. And it, it has you changed. Know, you know what I've always, found, I've always found amazing about the Democratic Party? In the time of Lincoln, in the time of slavery, Lincoln's a Republican. Mm -hmm. The Democratic Party are the ones that want to continue to hold blacks in slavery. Why on earth are they so prone to vote Democrat? Don't they know the history of the party they're voting for? They are the very yeah. ones that wanted to hold them slavery. Now it seems like they want to hold them and uh, them and, and everybody else in slavery by giving you handouts for votes, completely crippling your ability to do anything for yourself because now you're yes. dependent on the state. The nanny I state. Mean, that, that's the prison system. That's slavery. That's the prison system. That's the welfare system. Make somebody dependent. Give them a bunch of free money. Whether you're giving it to whatever race they are, it doesn't make a difference what race they are. It's it's they're they're relying on making people dependent to secure votes. Yeah. Somebody it's, was it's trying, if I knew somebody was trying to do that to me, I, they'd never get my vote. No, that's why. And, and, and I've seen it firsthand. My family saw it firsthand. Uh, what happened to them right. in Cuba with, with, with Fidel Castro and the communists and the regime, the nationalization. And, and I don't want to see this happen in this country again. I was fortunate enough to be uh, – my this great country took our family in. I was born in Los Angeles, raised in South Florida. And uh, my daughters have, have been raised here, born here, raised here. Uh, great country, constitution. We have to defend the constitution. I swore – and law enforcement to defend and protect constitution from enemies, foreign, domestic, right? And you have to fight for your, for your rights and freedom because they can be taken away very quick. Cuba had a very good constitution, almost exact to the United States. Fidel Castro, when the first thing we took over power, he suspended the constitution and never came back. 
over 70 years and never came back. Don't we have to fight for because you know what? A lot of people don't like freedom. I'll be honest with you, Bill. I've seen the world. I mean, I looked around. Many people are threatened by how free you, we take for granted. But many places in the world, you can't live the way we live. They don't want people talking like us. We, we do freely. How dare you talk and criticize this? And they will shut you down. And I've talked about Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi regime. I talked about my content book. You right. dare speak bad about his family and his and his dictatorship. It's bad news for you. It's Bad sort of like these these social media platforms, how they can so easily shut you down oh. if you if you really do a conservative or Republican viewpoint, because a lot of their founders are very hardcore Democrats. And it's like unless my my rule of thumb has always been this, because there's been books out about how to, you know, make an automatic weapon or a silence or a bathtub meth or something like that. They would always have disclaimers in them, you know, but they wouldn't shut the, 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 uh, the Constitution allows for the publishing of those books for informational purposes only. Now, if you're teaching somebody on these channels inciting violence or trying to sure. break the law, I get that they should shut your channel down. I get yeah, that. I but if I'm giving my opinion about a policy or about a politician and I'm not making a threat or inciting violence, they, they're just they're just out of control with the way they're shutting these channels now. Yeah, if you don't if you don't think like we do and what we like about it, then that's why I'm glad that we have Rumble. Right, it's, it's an yeah. alternative that, that at least you can still keep some of the shows here. If they choose not to accept it, there's other alternatives you can use, and there's more and more coming out because you have to have it. You got to have an alternative uh, way to communicate because if one platform decides, whoever, Facebook, YouTube, you know, they decide, oh, I don't like this guy's way of thinking. I mean, and Reddit, I was on there for years earlier. I don't go anymore because I had an unpopular opinion. I was suspended because I had an unpopular opinion about the Olympics, how, uh, how uh, Xi Jinping in China should not be hosting the Winter Games, right, in 2022. Unpopular opinion. I explained the corruption. I thought with the IOC, what was going on, and I was banned because that's blah, 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 and, and a lot of people were pro-Olympics no matter what. I don't care where it's at, what country. You have to. It's a joke. It's a gimmick. I'll tell you what. I'm, you know, I have this reality show, you know, millions and millions and millions of fans, and I had all these, I think they call them Reddit threads or whatever, and so mm -hmm. as the star of the show with millions of fans, people would ask questions, and i chime in. I just got out of incarceration. I didn't know how to use these or all the etiquette and all that. I knew not to call people names and not to threaten sure. anybody, not to incite violence. The, the basic guidelines that we've all lived by in this country forever. I yeah. knew that. I knew the common sense, common courtesy things. Even if I disagree yeah, with you, I'm not going to threaten you. But just for me commenting in and clarifying a few things, I was completely banned from Reddit. <laughs> oh, you're I have a permanent ban. Oh, yes. wow. Now, I, I, I was suspended. I, I, I was suspended, and, and, and then I, uh, I, I came back for a little bit. Then I said, you know what? They're just annoying me. They, they really do not appreciate my comments. Or whatever. So I, I, I personally, I canceled them out. They didn't cancel. I mean, I, after that nonsense, <laughs> I had a legitimate complaint about the IOC and, and Xi Jinping and the Olympics, but people there in that platform they didn't care. They only cared. They were obsessed and loving the Olympics no matter what. And I said, there's an issue here with the Olympics. I don't watch Olympics. I haven't watched Olympics in years because I think they are definitely corrupt. Right. So, and we don't, and we it, don't hate the Olympics. We love the Olympics. We all love the event and everything and the, the excitement and giving the people a chance to not, compete. Not the IOC. You know, the, the pride of seeing your country compete yeah. against other countries. The problem is the underlying alleged corruption with these countries. You don't reward that by bringing in billions and trillions of tourism dollars. So, you, you never, you never right. bring it to country like China. It's atrocious human rights does not deserve to have the host the Olympics. They don't deserve it. Only good countries, not evil. Russia doesn't deserve it. China doesn't deserve it. Uh, any country that you have atrocious human rights records against so many people oppressing their freedom. Remember it's a one party system, oppressive, oppressive. So they don't deserve anything of that. So one more topic before we, we go on. It, it's the border. And the problem oh, we yeah. have with this, the border and, and how it complains to be porous and it's open and without really not only the finishing the wall, not only finding all the underground tunnels, not only dealing with all the overstay. There is so much. There's no silver bullet. But you know what? If we don't start getting a handle on it again, you won't have a country to really get a handle of because it's like a ship flooding across undocumented criminals. It, smuggling. It, 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 it's like a ship, Bill. It's going to sink just like this. Kids are drowning, you know, women, pregnant women, infections, drowning, no, disease, 
uh, there's also military aged males from China somehow walking through the border. <laughs> what is that all about? <laughs> all over the world. Our RFK Jr., if you look at the video, he, he went out there with his team. He should record a full day out there. And you look it up, there are people from, from Africa, Afghanistan, all over the Middle East. People know that they're paid money to be brought to Mexico and then walk over and claim some sort of a political uh, asylum or, 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 or you know some hardship or what, what have you. Well, they're just here for economic reasons. It's not like people who came in fleeing from Eastern Europe or from Cuba right. or from, let's say, Venezuela. These people are here for economic reasons, not for political reasons. And they're exploring a loophole to stay here. And people know that. The world knows that. Not, everybody also knows that. Speculation, and I think some proof that a lot of countries are sending in these military age males slash intelligence officers in that way as refugees. They're healthy as they can be. They have significant amounts of cash on them, and they're, they're walking in. So. The, Ch the Chinese, the CCP is evil. And I can see them do that. I have a lot of books on them. The evil empire, right? De dealing with communist China. Uh, Xi Jinping, a genocidal dictator. I mean, all, the, all this stuff has record, been well documented. For YouTube, for YouTube, the opinions of myself and Ignacio do not reflect the opinions necessarily of YouTube. So I want to get right. that disclaimer out of the way before they give me a hard time. Yeah, we have to do that because we want to continue talking. But it, it is it, people have to educate themselves and read and see what's going on in the world around them. That's the most important yes. thing. And I always say verify something. Even if you see a video, there's a lot of deep fakes out there. Verify everything else. Verify everything else. Just like at the beginning, some people said that Trump did record that rap video. No, it was an AI, artificial intelligence, mimicked it perfectly. I'm gonna send you the the, the link so you can see it yourself. I saw a guy who's got a face. There's a guy who's got a Facebook channel. He exposes these AI fakes somehow. Hmm. Mr. Beast evidently is a massive personality on the YouTube, and he was doing uh, supposedly a giveaway of uh, what five thousand or ten thousand iPhone 15. You just had to do you jump through this hoop or another, right? And it was him talking, giving the pitch, and it was talking in his voice, and it wasn't him. But it circulated wow. all over the internet fast because people wanted that phone. <laughs> so. That's 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 it. Those are the uh, when you don't have and there's no real laws still like anything else. We're always behind the you know with the internet. We're, it took years Congress to catch up to, to put regulations with the internet. It take it's going to take years to catch up with AI, and there's going to be a lot of people who are going to lose a lot of money. And because you, you're going to get fake, you know, how people are used to con you. They're going to use AI to also either reach out to you with phone calls, whatever. It's going to be bad. Somebody, somebody could uh, do one of the president and like look, make it look like he's in his living room and say, you know, this guy, Ignacio, I've been watching the show's best undercover book I've ever read. You have to get this man's book. If you support me and my party, party, buy this book, ATF Undercover by Ignacio Esteban. Link in the description. Right. And then you have next thing you know, you have the president advertising your book. <laughs> it, it, oh, that's, that's all going to happen. It, it, it's all there. That's why you can't eat. Remember, you, 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 what was it saying? You, you you can't believe everything you see anymore. That 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 is so true. You used to be able to do it, but not anymore. You can't. You Let's can't see if they advertise it, my book. So we have "Sex and a Serial Killer." Serial link in the killer. description about the wealthiest Absolutely. serial killer in American history, Robert Durst. And Nancy Grace covered my book while I was still incarcerated on her podcast. And she's the queen of true crime. Now, if you search the internet, I'm the king of true crime, which is good because I'm a crime victim advocate. We're telling these stories. My second one is about my unfortunate uh, <laughs> relationship, so to speak, with Galen Maxwell. I was at the Palm Beach Mansion many times before she became infamous. And because I was running the, the, that area of uh, buying, selling, and stealing primarily stolen jewelry and artwork. So if you gotcha. want good reads, check out Ignacio's books. Check out my books. Links in the description and on Amazon. And we're going to wrap another political show. This is yeah, a political awesome. show. This is political season's heating up. Crazy mm. drama. Politics is not normal and, and kind of civil like it used to be. It's brutal, vicious. And Crazy. they're probably trying to put political opponents in jail these days in this country. Very sad. So, Crazy Steele, times we live in, Bill. Crazy times. Ignacio possibly for Congress. Wait, I'm going to point to you this way. There you go. Ignacio mm -hmm. for Congress. He's got my vote. If I could figure out a way to be legally voting, I have to, I'm looking into that. I could I could be president, but I don't know if I can vote yet because of my felonies. You can't vote for it. You won't be able to vote for yourself, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I have millions of fans. Yeah. I, hopefully, though. I, they, listen, they, my they, deal is this. I, like like Nixon, he said he yeah. was a crook. My thing is, I was a crook. With me, you know what you're getting, you know, and all my dirt's out there in front of for the world to see. And, you know, it's just a matter of my track record going forward. So. 
Thank Sounds you for good, joining. Bro. And we're going to end this particular show. At Join us next time. If you like it, subscribe. It helps. Notification and all that stuff helps as well. Take care.